Back in 2006, Will Walker changed the rules of Australian cycling. He was an under 23 and he won the elite road race. But he's not on the honour roll as the winner of the elite road race. Going to find out what he thinks about that. But also, 2014 when he rode the national championships, he nearly died because of tachycardia. Let's go and catch up with Will Walker. Can you look any sharper? Unbelievable. Definitely. This All is right. just pre um, getting out of hospital, okay? Yeah, yeah, thanks Mark. It's called pro-caffeinating. You can't actually do anything until you've had your first coffee of the day, so now we can get started. I'm the, I'm, I think I'm world champion in pro-caffeinating. <laughs> How do you feel? Uh, right now, you mm. know, I just got out of hospital a few days ago. Um, I've had a bit of a tough time with my heart. Uh, yeah. I've had multiple ablations. Um, multiple shocks from the defibrillator. I've had better days, let's just put it that way. What's it feel like when the defib goes off? Well, it's kind of like being electrocuted while being kicked in the stomach by a horse at the same time. Fabulous, sounds great. Yeah, and I had <laughs> nine shocks in about 40 minutes or something, so. Wow. Yeah, it's gonna be hard to get a full night's sleep for a while, I think. It's a, can you feel it on your body? Yeah, I can feel the, the device in there. It's yeah. like underneath the muscle and it, every now and again the muscles twitch and yeah. do all sorts of things, but so overall did, it's minimal. So it's 2006 when you won that Australian road title, does it feel like a long time ago? Yeah, look, it's, it does feel, I mean it's eight years ago, but it feels like way, way longer. I mean, since then I've retired once, I've lived a different life, I've come back, I've had heart conditions, I've had six ablations since then, I've had Bell's palsy, I've had you know, all types of different experiences in life and mostly difficult experiences. But I mean, it's so contrasting to then when everything was so easy for me. Yeah. I just trained for a few months You know, I was on top of the world. I was racing well, I was improving. I was on the trajectory to become a, a future champion of the sport. And then since then, it's just been a real roller coaster ride into, into real reality. <laughs> into reality. A lot of people would call those experiences character building. Oh, I definitely would you say that. You reckon you've got enough uh, character You know now? what? Uh, you know, a couple of things I might change, the yeah. shocks, but actually everything happens and it, there's good out of everything. And I'm, you know, I had a great start of my career um, and I've done a few grand tours and I've won a national championship. So mm. actually, you know, I achieved a lot and, uh, and the character building's been good fun too. You know your name's not on the honor roll as the winner of the 2006 Australian road title. You went across the finish line first, but you're under 23. Russell Van Hout is listed as the Australian champion. But he was actually third in the race because you won, and then Wes Salzberger won the sprint for second, and he was also under 23. And Van Hout is listed as the 06 Australian road champion. It's an interesting let, topic, but yeah. I mean, I think the way it was resolved that we were both able to wear the champion's jersey for the rest of the year because he was racing in Australia and I was racing in Europe with the rubber bank. Um, but yeah, in the end it was basically said that I was deemed the Australian champion, so I guess there is you know, reason mm. to say that I could get it changed. Yeah, well, I, I've got you down as the Australian road champion in Thanks, my Matt. mind. And it was one of those days, I sat on the side of the road with your two brothers, two of your three brothers, and your dad, and your younger brother, Nicky, spent the whole day ignoring you and reading Harry Potter. He wasn't interested in his brother winning the Australian road title. Yeah, actually he never liked cycling really. I mean, he was super But he did talented. go to a junior world championships for Australia. Yeah, I think he was <coughs> the best out of all of us, but he just, he was always interested in other things and yeah. learning and reading and... Yeah, and learning, that's a good one to be interested in. And then Johnny became a cult figure at the Tour of Spain because the name Johnny Walker, he called himself Blue Label and the Spanish just loved him. Yeah, he's, uh, he, he was a fantastic cyclist. Very cruisy, kind of like a musician and a cycling team. Yeah. Never had a power meter, heart rate monitor, training program, Loving. but just cruised on Scrum through. Was and not his thing. He was in the welter and uh, you know used to go on the team bus and play the guitar and sing for the team before yeah. the start. And you he know. plays piano. He plays piano. Yeah. And well, your older brother Rob has been in a lot of snowboarding films. Yeah, he's a, he was a professional snowboarder for about ten years. Yeah. Like one of the best in Australia, was in part of all of the films and. <clears throat> He's pretty cool. He's the cool one of the family, you know, but, um, and actually he, he likes cycling a lot too. He, yeah. he did a bit of road cycling for a while, just, you know, so had to be full black. He was way before <laughs> the full black time. So four brothers, one of them a professional snowboarder, you an Australian road champion, 
Johnny rode the Tour of Spain, and then Nick rode for Australia Junior World Championships. Jeans are okay. Yeah, the jeans are okay, and uh, it just turns out that, you know, I sort of ended up with a heart condition, ARVC, which could be um, through genetics, so we might not be that good in the end. Um, now we're all trying to use our yeah. brains a little bit more, and we're all studying, so that's good. Um, no one plays sport at all, so it's been a bit of a yeah. turnaround. Okay, so let's go back to 2006. What was it like when you went across the finish line and you won? Oh. and then standing on the podium. That was a, a special <clears throat> year. I mean, I was, I remember I was in Adelaide. I was in the hotel with, with Salzburger at the time. Yeah. And I was just in a new phase of life. I was so cocky. It was <laughs> terrible to be around. I was, I was really into myself. Um, and that self-belief was just yeah. what made me. I remember I got second at the Worlds and I just really thought, how could I lose an under 23 road championships after being second in the Worlds? Yeah. And I was second the two previous years but so basically I was just so confident I was so cocky that yeah. I just knew I had to win and I was doing a lot of mirror time and I was really <laughs> focusing on time. I had imagined the finish you so like times. Arnold Schwarzenegger in pumping iron exactly like Arnold Schwarzenegger for a few months I was just really using similar strategies to you know visualize the race yeah. and psych and out and the winning. others and psych out the others and in the end I just had to step up and win the, yeah. the whole day to win the under 23 road champs but at the time I just believed I could do it so. yeah so where's that that title sit because for me the Australian championships that green and gold jersey there's something really special about that what was it for you well I think it's um you never really know the outcome I mean these days now on Bunning Young we kind of know that Simon Gerrans is going to be up there and mm. it's a little bit different than it used to be so in those days it was really exciting racing you had to try and read the race you didn't yeah. know what was going to happen breakaways could form there were crashes it was one of the better races of the year and the, the fact that you get to wear the jersey for the rest of the year I mean that's yeah that pretty much trumps everything in cycling I mean it's not as good as wearing the yellow jersey at the Tour de France but it's it's pretty good it's up there as an Australian cyclist the yellow jersey the all the jerseys from the Grand Tours the rainbow jersey then the national champions jersey surely it's in that order yeah I mean <coughs> are there any other jerseys no well what would you rather have won the Australian title or the Tour Down Under well, I mean, when I raced the Tour Down Under, it wasn't, well, I got fourth one year and it wasn't World Tour, and I got the best young riders jersey, but I guess if it was a World Tour, I'd rather win the Tour Down Under, but only just. I mean, there's something special about the, the Australian Championship mm. jersey, and even thinking about it again, yeah, potentially I'd rather just be Australian champion. It's something you get to say for the rest of your life, and yeah. it's so, pretty special. 2014, you're on the start line again, and you get into the breakaway, <clears throat> and then you had a bout of tachycardia, potentially going to die, instead of drawing attention to yourself and actually getting help, you went and hid behind a car. What were you thinking? Well, I mean, there's two trends of thoughts there. And in the heat of the moment, um, you know, you just, once you're a racer, you're a racer. And, and I, once I get on a bike, I'd do anything to try and win. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not a very good feature. Um, yeah. But basically, um, you know, I was going, I was in tachycardia, so I was doing 270 beats a minute. So the actual brain function's not particularly not good. Yeah. Um, and, and my first, I guess it was combined with the fact that I wanted to find shelter to try and reduce my core temperature. So that's one reason for sort of ducking behind a car. But I think there was a chance that I thought it would just sort of calm down behind a car, mm. getting off the bike, and that, you know, I could potentially look at, you know, what went wrong and maybe continue to race. And I think that's just the initial thoughts. When you're a cyclist, you want to ride your bike and yeah. you just love it. So, I mean, I was being protecting them, yeah. um, you know, just because it's, um, you know, such a beautiful thing to do, yeah. racing different countries. And I was excited about the year and especially racing in some countries I'd not been to before. So, mm. you know, amazing decision. We make there. mistakes, yeah. don't we, in <laughs> life? That was a crazy decision. We were lucky we didn't lose you. What about the coffee? How's that go with the heart? Uh, coffee's okay. Like, I, I try to be one coffee a day. Yeah. Um, it's not too bad. Alcohol I don't have. I don't have any of the bad types of fats or, yeah. you know, any, you know, <coughs> high salt yeah. intake diet. Um, and I've got to be quite careful with everything. So, but coffee seems to be just one a day okay. I mean, my body's been so used to coffee over the years. It's You're going to shut down if you know, you have it. You know, it's going to shut down. So it's not like it's giving me a a boost it's just bringing me back to normal getting on the level kill and now you're working at the baker institute which yeah. is does for 88 years been doing research into heart disease and diabetes and do you feel that's 
comforting given your situation to be able to actually work in that area? Yeah, look, it's really good to make a difference. I mean, I'm not <clears throat> at the ground level as a mm. scientist, but yeah. to be able to try and raise money and, you know, yeah. through yeah. different initiatives, raise the profile of um, the Baker IDI and, yeah. it's, and, and curing uh, arrhythmias, it's a really good thing. Um, and the, the second fact is I'm right next to the Alfred, so you know, <laughs> I know I'm close wrong. to emergency. And, <laughs> And last time I went through eight, no, nine shocks. So, you know, if I had a problem at, at work, at least I know I'm probably only two shocks away from being okay. <laughs> well, I think what we should do, we should go and have a look at that on a roll and maybe put Will Walker's name next to Russell Van Howe, get that fixed up. Asterix. Asterix? Yeah. No, that brings back memories of Lance Armstrong. We need ah. something else. We'll just put some sort of an explanation, a disclaimer in there. But you should be on that on a roll. I'm glad you're still with us. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate it.